welcome to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by a living poet, Scott Cairns, who is currently head of the MFA program in creative writing at Seattle Pacific University. His books of poetry include uh, collections like The Theology of Doubt, The Translation of Babel, The Philokalia, Idiot Psalms, and Slow Pilgrim, The Collected Poems. He has written for many, many journals, such as the Paris Review and New Republic and Poetry, and he has been anthologized in Best Spiritual Writing and Best American Spiritual Writing. Dr. Cairns has also received fellowships from the Guggenheim Foundation and the National Endowment for the Humanities, and he was awarded the Denise Levertov Award in 2014. Today's poem is called Early Frost. This morning... The world's white face reminds us that life intends to become serious again. And the same loud birds that all summer long annoyed us with their high attitudes and chatter silently line the gibbet of the fence a little stunned, chastened enough. They look as if they're waiting for things to grow worse, but are watching the house as if somewhere in their dim memories they recall something about this abandoned garden that could save them. The neighbor's dog has also learned to wake without exaggeration, and the neighbor himself has made it to his car with less noise, starting the small engine with a kind of reverence. At the window, his wife witnesses this bleak tableau, blinking her eyes, silent. I fill the feeders to the top and cart them to the tree, hurrying back inside to leave the morning to these ridiculous birds, who, reminded, find the rough shelters, bow and then feed. This poem, Early Frost, is from a collection called The Translation of Babel, which was uh, from 1990, uh, released by the University of Georgia Press, if you are interested in finding it. For many of you who are listening, the early frosts have probably begun to settle in. Um, Even here in North Carolina, I hear tell that we may be getting one this weekend. And just this evening, I went outside to grab something out of my car probably around 6 p.m., 6.30. And there was maybe two dozen birds of of a species that I couldn't tell exactly what, what it was, but they were fairly significant in size. And, and they, from what I could tell, they were black, but we're sur- our house is surrounded by quite a few trees. And the birds were, they were going at it for some reason. And they were knocking acorns out of trees and they were knocking branches down. And, um, and then they were flying way up into the sky and then they were dropping back down again and they were flying up into the sky. And it seemed like in some ways they were fighting or throwing a party or whatever. And you, I couldn't tell exactly what they were doing. And then they just sort of disappeared. And I called my kids and we, we listened to them for a minute and we watched them for 30 seconds or something. And then they were gone. But it reminded me of this poem. This is the time of year, it's October, it's mid-October, when the world begins to change so much. In some ways, it reminds us of what's coming. As the poem says, it reminds us that life intends to become serious again. I'm reading Laura Ingalls Wilder's book, The Long Winter, about a very serious winter in North Dakota. A winter that was survived uh, because of fortitude and courage and, and wisdom. And so as we enter um, deeper into autumn, and winter comes near, even here in North Carolina, where we don't have to endure what some of the rest of you do in this country. Um, and I'm from Wisconsin, so I, so I get that. I've, I've lived through that a little bit. As we enter this season, it's the kind of season that reminds us of the necessity for hope, um, the necessity for memory, and I think the necessity for humility as well. And I think that those are things, those are virtues that this poem seems to be about. It seems to be reflecting on those things. I'm particularly fond of the line about the birds who are reminded of the existence of the rough shelters, and they bow, and then they feed. It's memory, humility, and hope right there in, the, in, in that image. The world does intend to be serious, and it may get worse, but in spite of that, through memory and humility, and hope, we can endure a long winter. Even if sometimes we need to be the one who is filling the bird feeder, reminding the birds of its existence, and offering some hope in the face of what may be coming. So I guess maybe this is a serious poem, but I think it's also a lovely poem. So once again, one more time, Early Frost by Scott Cairns. 
This morning, the world's white face reminds us that life intends to become serious again. And the same loud birds that all summer long annoyed us with their high attitudes and chatter silently line the gibbet of the fence a little stunned, chastened enough. They look as if they're waiting for things to grow worse, but are watching the house as if somewhere in their dim memories they recall something about this abandoned garden that could save them. The neighbor's dog has also learned to wake without exaggeration, and the neighbor himself has made it to his car with less noise, starting the small engine with a kind of reverence. At the window, his wife witnesses this bleak tableau, blinking her eyes, silent. I fill the feeders to the top and cart them to the tree, hurrying back inside to leave the morning to these ridiculous birds, who, reminded, find the rough shelters, bow, and then feed. This has been The Daily Poem. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another poem for you. Thank you.